worship you, Lord, we live. We live to worship you, oh God. Because you are Hosanna, because of what you've done for us, oh God. We worship you, oh God, in spirit and in truth. You're such a great God. We thank you for your sacrifice. And for that we worship you. Worship him. I'm not sure as you may allow the worshipers in. I'm not sure as if there's any worshipers, let them in.
forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from the great I am, the great Elohim, the great Yahweh. We worship you, God, right now in the beauty of holiness as your word declares. So fill this place now with your glory and with your presence. For you said to enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your court with praise. And we come now, God, to worship you. Glory, 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 glory. Oh. Glory to your name, God. God, we love you. God, we bless you. Glory to your name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As we lift our hands and worship God, he's pouring down his spirit in us, his spirit of strength, his spirit of power, his spirit of joy, his anointing for us to walk right and talk right and live right. So as we just lift our hands and worship him, God is inhabiting the praises of his people. Hallelujah. Can we just open our mouths a little bit longer and let him know how much we love him on this morning, how much we appreciate him on this morning, how much we honor him on this morning. I can't hear you in this place today. I can't hear you opening up your mouth and letting him know that you, you just appreciate his anointing. You appreciate his love. You just magnify him for all that he's done for you. And we just want to worship him. We want to take a moment and worship him in spirit and in truth. For he deserves all of our glory and all of our honor on this morning. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a good God on this morning. We serve an awesome God on this morning. And there is no one that can do us like Jesus. There's no one that can heal us like Jesus. There's no one that can deliver us like God. Thank you, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you on this morning. We give you glory and we give you honor, God. We thank you for the sweet spirit that is in this place, God, and that your people have set aside a time to just honor you and to worship you, God. Touch us, Lord, like never before, God. Move on us, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you and we praise you, God. Thank you for healing our hearts on this morning, God. Thank you for regulating our mind on this morning, God. Thank you for just stopping by and remembering us on this morning, God. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. God, we praise you, Lord. God, we magnify you. God, I thank you. I'm trying to move on, but Lord, I feel your spirit in this place, God, and I feel your anointing just resting on us on today, God, and, and I feel your healing power, God, just moving from person to person, God, and from pew to pew, God, and Lord, we just want to say thank you. We want to stay in that place, God, and, and we want you to move those things that haven't been moved for a long time, God. We want you to move those those hurts, God, that, that we just carry like a, like a ton of bricks on our back, God, and, and we want to move that confusion that's in our minds, God, and, and we want you to regulate our hearts and our minds, God, that when we serve you, God, we can serve you in spirit and in truth, God. And we want you to touch our families that are not present today, God, and, and let them know that you love them, God, and that you sent your son, God, to, to die for them, God, that, that they don't have to be bound, God, but they can be free in Jesus, for whom the Son set free, God, is free indeed, and, and we thank you for your freedom, God, and we thank you for your peace, God, and, and we bind the enemy that will keep us bound, and, and we bind the enemy, God, that will keep us tangled up and mangled up 
love and foolishness and we take authority over the enemy God that would bring death and, and destruction into our homes God send your word to our homes God send your word to our communities God send your word God to the White House God and heal and deliver and set free God and while you're doing that God prepare us God for the end days and the last days God with destruction it's bound to come because you said it in your word, God. But if we're hiding in a secret place, God, you will keep us. You will protect us, and you will keep us, Lord, even in the darkest hours, God. For, Lord, we are living in horrible, horrible times, God. But we serve a God who is able to keep us, who is able to deliver us, who is able to keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and destruction. So God, as we try to move, God, the service along, God, we ask, God, that you will continue to be with us, God, that you will continue to rest on us, God, and that your power will flow through us, God, that when the enemy come against us like a flood, God, you will raise up a standard against him in the name of Jesus. We bind the enemy's attack on our family. We take authority over the spirit of sickness and disease in this place on the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus and Lord we will walk in authority we will walk in power God and we will put on your strength God and we will be clothed with your word God and that there is no weapon that it will be formed against us will prosper in Jesus name we pray hallelujah hallelujah glory come on give God glory in this place Come on and give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here at the Second Baptist Church 
of Mount Holly. Amen to all that are visiting with us in the congregation. We know God is already blessing you. Amen. And to those watching us by way of live stream, it is our prayer that God is blessing you as he's blessing us right now in the sanctuary. Come on, put your hand together. Give God a hallelujah praise. Before our Jehovah Worship gives us selection, we want to say happy birthday to Sister Robinson. Amen. It is her 93rd birthday. She is not with us today. She lives across the street, y'all know, but she is watching us by way of live stream. If we can get a camera shot of the congregation, amen. Can we get a camera shot of the congregation? There you go. No, look this way. It's this camera. Wave to Sister Robinson, and we're going to sing happy birthday just to Sister Robinson on today. Amen. And Jehovah Works is going to lead us in that. Happy birthday, Sister Robinson.
Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank our Jehovah. Thank our Jehovah worship. Amen for leading us. Amen. We're going to ask you to prepare your offering now. Amen. Uh, as you get your offering ready, our trustees and our ushers will come. Amen. And make ready. Amen. To receive our offering. Amen. Believe uh, again, if you don't know about giving, we ask that you pick up the literature that is for you in the foyer uh, in our uh, three or four ways of giving, our tithes, our offering, our first fruits. Amen. Our three ways of giving that we uh, teach here at Second Baptist Church. Amen. That as believers in Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we're all to tithe. Bring your tithes into the storehouse. The Bible says it might be me in my house. Uh, so that is our first obligation unto the Lord in obedience to his word is to tithe. And then it says then bring our offering. Offering is for ministry to see that ministry continues through the church. Amen. The tithe is to sustain the church. Amen. Um, but the offering is to do ministry um, through the church. Amen. So we need you to give your tithe and offering. We also have first fruit giving, which we give three times a year. Amen. The beginning of the year, and then mid part through the year, and then near the end of the year, we do what we call our first fruit giving, which is a, uh, a principle under the old covenant of bringing your first fruits before the Lord three times a year, which is even though we're not under the old covenant, it is still a principle of the of giving. Amen. And God blesses the first fruit. And those who have participated in our first fruits will tell you how God has blessed them uh, by this added giving. Amen. And so as you prepare your offering, our ushers and trustees will come uh, and uh, receive your offering. At this time, there are other ways to give. Some give by PayPal. Some give by way of our website. Some give by dropping off in the mail or sending it in. Uh, however you see fit uh, to give your tithes and your offering, we pray that you just be obedient to the Lord in your giving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this time of giving. To those who have already given God uh, through PayPal, through uh, social media, however, Lord, their means of giving, we pray, God, your blessings upon them, God, those who have given at the beginning of the month, Lord, we pray for all of them. And so we pray for this offering, God, and today and those who have given thus far. Uh, and God, we pray you continue your blessings upon the church, the ministry, and those who give according to the obedience of your word. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. As our offering uh, is going forth, there are several announcements that we do have uh, that we want to share with you that we pray, ask that you uh, particularly pay attention to your announcement. We have a whole lot going on. Uh, there's a lot going on here at Second Baptist Church. There's a lot going on all around. And so we need you to pay uh, attention to your announcement and please listen uh, to the announcements that we are giving you uh, today. Amen. Uh, first of all, this afternoon, we'll start with this afternoon. This afternoon, uh, there is a Palm Sunday concert uh, at Macedonia Baptist Church in Beverly, where our son is, Reverend Jacochi, uh, is pastor. Uh, they are giving a Palm Sunday concert this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Many of our uh, church members are participating in it, our band. So come out and enjoy an afternoon of worship, of praise and song. Uh, to, unto the Lord, uh, Sister Christy does a, a just tremendous job of bringing people together uh, and presenting uh, these musical uh, worship uh, events uh, for us for Christmas and now for Palm Sunday, that is today. So please, if you're not doing things this afternoon, um, come be a part uh, of that worship service. This coming week, this coming week, uh, we will have Bible study on Wednesday night. Come out and, and Enjoy Bible study as we continue our teaching on the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think there's more and more to learn about the Holy Spirit. Come on out. Come get here early so you can get a seat. Uh, we are uh, we serve dinner at 6 o'clock. Bible study begins at 630. So come and be a part of the Bible study uh, as we begin to get into the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Get an understanding of what the Bible says about the gifts. Uh, so come out and be a part of that study on Wednesday night. Uh, also, Macedonia will be having services this week, also Wednesday night and Thursday night. 
they will be having uh, Thursday night service. This is Holy Week. Many churches have services all week long. This is Holy Week. Today beginning those services with today being Palm Sunday. Uh, they are having service on Thursday night if you're not doing anything. Uh, they uh, are coming to join in with us on Friday night. All right. Uh, they do, they're not having service on Friday night. They're coming to join with us on Friday night. Now, Friday night. Woo! Friday night. This Friday night, service begins at 6.30. I would suggest you get here before 6.30. Amen. So you can get in and get a seat. I know there are good Friday services going on everywhere, uh, but this is a unique good Friday service. And I have been involved in good Friday services for the last 50 years. And this is the first that I've seen uh, all the churches I've been to and through for a Good Friday service. I have never seen one where the youth are giving the seven last words. Amen. And not only are the youth giving the seven last words, but the youth are going to dance. The youth are giving a puppet show. The youth are going to usher. I'm telling you, to have our youth so involved on a good Friday, I, I'm telling you, I just can't wait. I just can't wait. Amen. I can't wait. So be here Friday night. Bring somebody with you. Bring family. Bring those with you to share with us on this Friday night. Amen. Uh, also, uh, before this Lenten season ends, uh, I, I got to acknowledge Sister Graham, Brother Graham, um, for their 40-day uh, of letting go series that they're doing every morning at 6.30. The links are in your program. You can go back and look at some of the programs they already have done. They have been amazing. Amazing. I, I tell you, I tell you, they have been amazing. Uh, Mark and I this week, met Lady B from WDAS. Lady B don't have nothing on them. <laughs> Hello, Lady B. <laughs> Lady B promised she was going to give me a shout out on DAS this Tuesday. So y'all listen to DAS this Tuesday. A amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, but we thank God for them and what they are doing uh, and how th th that morning broadcast has been uh, 6.30 in the morning, right? That 6.30 broadcast in the morning has been a tremendous blessing. A amen. And I tell you, it's a wonderful thing. So if you have not been able to tune in yet, uh, it's, how many more you got left? We're done, right? This is the last week, all right? They did it during the Lenten season, but you can go back and look at any of the links. They are, it, is, it was just tremendous. I think this is the start of something. Amen. I think this is the start of something. So I thank God for their whole row of family there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for them. Amen. So please uh, tune in, in into that. Amen. Uh, we have next Sunday is uh, so, uh, Resurrection Sunday. We say Easter, but Resurrection Sunday. Remember, we have baptism. Uh, we have how many getting baptized? We have four getting baptized. That will be at the beginning of the service. So we're at it 10 o'clock. We'll be coming into the pool. Amen. So uh, be here. Uh, be in place. Amen. For a baptism um, next Sunday. Uh, amen. For our worship service. Uh, amen. Um, I'm going to have my wife. Well, yeah, I'm going to have my wife. She's going to talk about the, the Women's Day Fellowship, and then we'll get with the other events that are going on that I want you to make sure you mark in your calendar. Okay, and I'm going to do something else that I don't usually do. I'm going to go back on what my husband was saying in reference to the Grams. Um, we weren't able, we were asked early on to do one of the segments, and with our schedule, I traveled and the funeral home, we just weren't able to participate as far as preparing and being one of, her, one of the guests. But let me tell you, I was up every day showering, and the phone 
was in the shower with me. So please go back from the first all the way up. You, you will, I was so blessed ex on some of the um, sessions when they talked about things that I was saying, God, why didn't you show, why didn't I see that when I was, you know, had little teeny children or, well, why didn't I think, there were just so many things that blessed me. So I'm telling you, please, if you don't know how to do YouTube or you're not tech savvy like myself, you have a niece, a granddaughter, a grandson, get the information, grab your younger children and tell them, hey, put me on because I need to see this because it is something that everyone needs to see. Very informative, very spiritual. It was just amazing. So please check on that. So I don't usually go back when my husband says something, but I wanted to add to that. So now um, I'm going to speak about April 6th. And last week, our very own Minister Roger, she did the announcement, she did a fabulous job. So I'm going to kind of piggyback off of what she did because we do not want you to leave here as we sometimes do and we say, oh, I didn't know that was going on, or oh, I didn't read that in the announcement, or oh, I didn't hear that. We want you to hear exactly what's in your announcement. So please, if you have an announcement, please read your announcements. You may not, something may be going on at the time that we're talking, you may miss something, but you go back and you read over everything and you look and mark the, uh, the dates on your calendar, you don't have to miss anything. So with that being said, I'm going to talk about April the 6th. We are having a women's fellowship. And how many know that women need women? in a healthy, healthy way. So sometimes we say, oh, well, I'm not gonna go because I don't know anybody, or oh, I'm not gonna go because, you know, maybe I won't be missing anything. But I'm gonna tell you that if you do not make this fellowship, you are going to miss a treat. We have two ladies, we have Dr. Denise King, and we have Pastor Sayeda, did I say it right? <laughs> um, they are gonna come and they are gonna bless us. So our theme is, you know, we want to we want to reach sister to sister, and we want to we have two topics that we really want to outline. One of our topics is forgive so that you can live. How many know that sometimes we hold on to things that just keeps us down, and we take two steps forward, then we get not five steps back. So whether it's something that someone has done to you, or whether it's an opportunity that you missed out on or whether it's just something that you just are really down on, sometimes it holds us back from being the best that we can be in life. So we don't want to just live. We want to live the abundant life. So we have set aside this day to come together as women, sister to sister, just to be authentic and true before God. And God is going to meet us here. Whatever we put our hands to do, he will bless it as long as we are honoring him and we are in his will and we are walking and his steps. And that's what we are doing. We are coming together, sister to sister fellowship, to just hear what God has to say to us. And we don't know how God is going to move, but we do know we have two phenomenal women who love the Lord, who have experience. And um, Pastor Saeed, she's going to speak on forgiveness. And we're coming from Genesis, the 15th chapter. I'm not going to read the whole Everything is here. You might have to put your glasses on because the writing is small. But we're also going to be coming from Psalms 91, dwelling in that secret place. How many know that when you're in that secret place with God, He hears you and He lowers His ear and He's inclined to do what He needs to do in your life. So we want to talk about dwelling in that secret place and why we're in that secret place, having God teach us how to forgive so that we can live. And then we have Dr. Denise talking about having the mind of Christ. Letting this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And then we're going to have our very own, our mental health ministry. They're going to participate as well. Because how many know that mental health is a huge thing? And, I, and I've said this multiple times. You know, if you have a headache, you can take Tylenol. If you, you know, if you, if you need a hip replacement, the doctors can give you a new hip. But when you have a mind, there is no one that can take your brain out and give you a new brain. Are suffering even in the body of Christ. Mental illness is one of the number one things that is just keeping us down in so many different areas. So we are going to touch on having the mind of Christ. You know, 
of breaking those generational curses and letting the devil know that you've come this far but no further. Like we've had enough. And there's nobody but God that can do it. So we are going to come together. And we're going to let God regulate our minds and give us the mind of Christ so that we can be healed, we can be delivered, and we can be set free. So when you come, to, well, first of all, read over the scriptures. We have the scriptures here. They're, they're real small, but read over the scriptures. So when you come in, you're not just coming in saying, be, 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 be. You're coming in saying, God, I've done my work, and I've done my study, and my cup is open. Fill me up because I want to be changed. I want to be healed. I want things to be rearranged in my life. So come prepared for victory. Come prepared for healing. Come prepared for deliverance. So... I expect to see all of our ladies. If you do not have something on your calendar already, and even if it's something that's on your calendar that you can change the date, I would advise you to do that because we are expecting a mighty move of God in this women's fellowship on April the 6th, as Minister Roger said. At what time? That sounded a little weak. April the 6th, at what time? Here in the sanctuary. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Again, there's so many announcements. Uh, we just want to highlight some things uh, as we've been doing uh, our youth karaoke night. Amen. On the 5th. Amen. So youth come out and have fun. Just bringing our youth together just to have fun together and fellowship. Amen. Youth karaoke night on the 5th. So parents, uh, bring your children out. Amen. Uh, and then we have, uh, we will be hosting the youth explosion for the Modest Walker uh, society, Missionary Society, that will also uh, be a night of fun for youth from our church and other churches. Uh, so we will be hosting that. Um, what's the date on that? That is, that's on the 19th, all right? So put that on your calendar. Remember that as well. A amen. Uh, Mother Day t-shirts are available, all right? Get your Mother Day t-shirts. Um, the final day to place the order is April the 14th. Uh, so please see, go in the office and you can order, uh, Mr. see Brenda. Sister Brenda, uh, Minister Brenda, uh, in reference to your Mother Day t-shirt. So let's order those. A amen. Uh, and then we also want to bring to mind that we are um, have reorganized and we're reorganizing so many of our ministries uh, this year uh, as we move forward. Amen. As a church, as a ministry. Uh, so we we're reorganize, reorganizing so many things and choirs is one of the things we reorganize. Uh, so pay attention to the schedule. Uh, there will, we have to, had to change the schedule. Uh, we had to change the schedule. So uh, there will be the, they will, there'll be no choir rehearsal uh, for the Jubilee Choir and fully committed on April 2nd. All right, we have some other things we have to do. Uh, to get ready for these two choirs um, but so we will not have rehearsal on April the 2nd uh, they will begin the first reconstruction choir rehearsal on April 16th will be fully committed in the Jubilee Choir April 30th all right um, so we will be doing something else on this coming first Sunday as well uh, so please uh, make that note uh, as we are reforming our choirs uh, we are changing the structure of our choirs, a amen, and so we're looking forward to what the Lord is going to do uh, through that reconstruction. Uh, so come out, anyone who's been wanting to join the choir, you can come and join the choir. The age ranges are in uh, your bulletin, so please um, uh, take heed to that, uh, amen. Um, there's one other one I wanted to highlight. Uh, so, and those for the Jubilee Choir. If you need a ride, you, you uh, see the uh, office, and the announcement is also there uh, for that. Uh, and then also, we, are, we have reconstructed, redone our, what used to be our senior day program. All right, it's now going to be called the Second Baptist Community Day Fellowship. Amen. And so they will be restarting on Tuesday, April the 9th, uh, with an open house. No, they will continue on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2. Uh, they will have an open house on Wednesday, April the 10th. All right, uh, April the 10th. So we're asking everyone to come out and support them as uh, their re reorganization of the Second Baptist Community Day Fellowship. 
So come on out. You don't have to be a senior. You don't have to be a female. We want everybody, if you're free during the day, to come on out and be a part of our new, newly formed Second Baptist Church Community Day Fellowship. Amen. And if you're not doing anything, especially on their opening day, come out and support their opening day as uh, our family and friends. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I guess that's everything. Everything else you can read uh, for yourself. Amen. Um, as we continue in ministry, like I said, we got a lot going on this month. Um, that's why we print all this in here for you to read. Amen. God bless your heart. Jehovah Worship is going to come and lead us as we prepare for the word of God.
Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for all that you have done. And we continue, God, in this worship experience. God, it is our prayer that the atmosphere has been set. The atmosphere of praise, worship, that we have released our worship in spirit into the atmosphere. God, the atmosphere in which has been governed by the prince of the power of the air. God, to free the atmosphere of any confusion, of any chaos, of your spirit speaking to our spirit, that we might receive a word from you now that the atmosphere, the cloud of glory that has filled this temple, this place where we have sanctified, that has been ordained to the worship and praise of your holy name, that the atmosphere has been cleared of any interference or confusion that we might receive a word from you, that you might speak into every heart, every mind, and make a deposit into every spirit. And so, God, we bind every hindering spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that, that has that thought in the back of their mind that is hindering them from hearing a word from God today. We bind that spirit now. Free that spirit. Free that mind. Free that heart. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you glory. We give you praise. God, I want to hear a word from you. And I want the avenue clear that nothing, God, will confuse my mind, my understanding, nor my thinking of hearing what you need to say to me today. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. Speak to our hearts and our minds now and make deposit inside of us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together give God glory. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we have been uh, talking over the past few Sundays, and I know Sunday, last Sunday, we didn't get into the word because it was a, the Lord moved and shifted our service to a service of gratitude and appreciation uh, to him uh, just to show our gratitude and appreciation. But we are on the subject, journey, the journey to the cross. Um, and I was hoping to have more time uh, in explaining uh, from the beginning uh, of the scriptures all the way to um, um, the coming of Jesus, that whole journey that we see Christ in the journey, even throughout the Old Covenant, through the Old Testament, we see Christ in the journey. Uh, let me say this. The Bible says in, in John in chapter number 14, it says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. All right, so we, first uh, we need to understand that the only way to get to God is through Jesus Christ. All right. There are so many different teachings of how people can get to God. And many people don't want to go through Jesus Christ. They, want, they don't want to go through the blood. They don't want to go through the cross. They don't want to go through Jesus to get to God. So everybody think they can get to God in their own way. And there's so many different teachings and different religions and, 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 and other teachings, even of the Christian faith of now, that how you can get to God, but you don't have to go through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, therefore, by making, uh, declaring that statement, uh, according to the scripture of John chapter number 14, then the only way to get to God and to have relationship with God is through Jesus Christ. All right. So, therefore, if Jesus declares this in John chapter number 14, that the only way to get to God is through him, then we can see the journey from the creation of man all the way to the cross the involvement of Christ himself in that journey because it had to be through Christ and through him that we finally have come to our salvation and to become recreated or reconformed or uh, conformed into the image of Christ which was lost at the time of sin and when Adam and Eve gave up that, 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 that likeness in that image of God because of sin. And so when Jesus or God says, let us make man in our image, we see the work of the triune God. We see the 
work of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And because they lost that likeness, because they lost that image, it only took the, the shed blood of Christ. Now, God tried to do some things. He tried to work with man throughout the Old Covenant, and we're going to get into it in a minute, to restore man or to have man back. Amen. But we find in Hebrews where Jesus said, and let's, let's go there real quick. That's not where I want to go first, but let's go there um, real quick. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. So, so, so I only jump ahead of myself. Let me, let me just read that real quick to you. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. All right, are you there? All right, it says, uh, well, let me back up. I'm going to go to verse 4. It says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. The reason I wanted to say that first is because in the Old Covenant, uh, there was the sacrifice of animals and the shedding of their blood that had to be done in the temple. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. That had to be done. But Jesus says here, the word says here, in verse number five, it says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, just talking about Jesus, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body, a body, a body thou hast prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin uh, that has had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do the will of of God. All right. So, uh, in essence, the, that scripture right there gives us a, really an explanation of what has transpired under the old covenant and what was the principles and what was the old covenant and down Jesus becoming uh, the sacrifice to take away sin forever. So, he says, a body that has prepared, uh, prepared me. So, therefore, we see now that the triune God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus was already with God from the beginning of time, but he says now, a body thou hast prepared me. The body that he has prepared him was the body or the physical body of Jesus. All right, was the body now that he had to come into uh, that he might now fulfill or continue to fulfill the plan of God. All right, now, because I don't want to get away from the emphasis of today, uh, turn with me to uh, John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12. And then we're going to go back. John chapter number 12, because I do want to highlight the purpose of today. All right, which is we consider Palm Sunday. All right, if you go down to verse number, John chapter number 12, go down to verse number 12, uh, it says, On the next day, much people that were come to the feast where they had heard that, where they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, verse 13, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. All right. So that's where we are today as uh, far as what we consider a palm Sunday. You see the palms here uh, on, the, on the communion table, which the palms will be given to you uh, at, at the conclusion of the service. Uh, but we have come to Palm Sunday, which was the beginning of the week or beginning of what we call Holy Week or Passion Week uh, to lead us to we get to Friday, which Friday is when he was crucified. But there was different events that took place each day uh, of the week that leads us to Friday, his crucifixion and then his resurrection on next Sunday, which we call Resurrection Sunday or which some, some call, call Easter. It gets us uh, to uh, 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 the Resurrection Sunday. So, today is Palm Sunday. Now, I'm not going to deal with Palm Sunday today, um, but I just want you to understand what today is because we're still doing Journey to the Cross, the journey that gets us to here. But I want us to, I want you to recognize that today is Palm Sunday, but I'm not going to deal with the palms today like I usually do because I'm still de dealing with Journey to the Cross because there's so much teaching, as I stated, of other ways to get to God, and we have to see the journey of Christ from the creation of man 
to G why it had to be Jesus on the cross. It had to be Jesus. Jesus was the only one who could die for our sins. Jesus was the only one who could be sacrificed. Uh, did God try other means and measures to try to get men to do right, you know, throughout the Old Covenant? Yes, he did. And that's why we see that the Old Covenant was set. Now, Jesus hung on the cross. Jesus says, it is finished. What was finished? The redemptive work was not finished because he has not yet resurrected from the cross. He, when he said it is finished, which is the last word, well, second to the last word of the seven sayings of Jesus Christ, um, it, when he said it is finished, was me, was, he was uh, uh, making reference to the old covenant was now complete. The old covenant in that he has now come in the volume of the book. He has done what is the will of his father. He had completed the old covenant, now taking away the old covenant, which was now the sacrifice of lambs is where we left off in our last journey, was the sacrifice of the Passover. That's why this Sunday on Palm Sunday was why they were all in Jerusalem. They were there for the Passover feast because they had to come once a year for the Passover feast. So everyone was in Jerusalem. So when Jesus came to Jerusalem, the Bible says that when they heard that he was coming, when they heard that he was on the way, the Bible says that they took palm trees and they laid them in their way, in, in his way. Uh, and some of them waved them crying Hosanna um, because they were there for the Passover. The Passover was, it was the principle of the old covenant. It was something that they were told to do as the children of Israel uh, that God told them to do uh, in order that their sins might be covered for uh, once a year. Now, there's a whole lot of scriptures I can give you, but I, I, let me just tell you the story. So, we see in Genesis when man was created, God, the Bible says that they were created in the image of God, right? And the Bible says male and female, he created them in, in the image that he created it. The Bible says that after the fall of man or after man, man fell, that they were no longer now, man was no longer created. Original man was created in the image of God. But now uh, any descendants now of Adam and Eve were, were now born in the image of Adam because Adam now has sin in him, all right? The original creation man did not have sin in them, all right? So God begins this process now that the Bible says that when they realized they had sinned, they sowed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Well, that was not enough. Now God had to pro provide a covering for them, and that covering was, the Bible says, that he made coats of skin now to cover them, all right? This is where we see now the divine, the beginning of the divine covering of God, and how God, because he loved man so much, there had to always be a divine intervention of covering. All right, are you with me so far? because this is going to be a fast track, all right? So, 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 so that, that's a good point to know that God is always covering you. He loves you so much. He loved man so much that the, even the fig leaves that man made was, a, was, a not, was not enough for a covering, all right? So the Bible says that God now slew an animal, made coats of skin to give them a covering. God still covers us to the day. That's how much he loves you, that he's covering you even today. God, God walks covering you all the time, all right, because of his love for mankind, his love for you, especially once you become a child of God and you accept what Jesus did on the cross for you, God has a covering on you and he's walking with you. He's talking with you. He's with you. That's why he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, why? Because I want to be with you and in you every day. I want to be your covering all the time. I want to be the covering when you're hurting. I want to be your covering when you're in pain. I want to be your covering when you're sick. I want to be covering when you get that diagnosis. I want to be your covering when you're going through your trials, tribulations, pains, your upsetting, downsetting. He said, I want to be with you to let you know there is a covering that is always with you and on you. And that's why I said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because why? I am covering you. And so we see this covering beginning when man has even sinned. Men had, man had even disobeyed God. But God said, I still want to cover you. Even your disobedience, even when you've done wrong, the love of God still says, I still want to cover you. Are you with me? 
And so he took an animal, he slew an animal. That was the first shedding of blood. So now we see, according to principle, shedding of blood had to be done for a covering. Do you, are you with me? Because in order to make coats of skin, an animal had to be killed, right? So God slew an animal to make them, to make a covering. So therefore, under the Abrahamic covenant, um, uh, when, when God made the covenant with Abraham, that this is a new race, this is a new seed, uh, that because I need, uh, I need uh, children to be obedient. But prior to that, well, no, after that, uh, he, he designed the tabernacle. And so he told them, what I need you to do is I need you uh, once a year, because y'all remember when, when, when they were in bondage in Egypt, right? Um, the, the Bible says that take the blood and put it on the mantelpost, right? Y'all remember that, right? When the children of Israel were freed from, from, from Egypt, he said, put the blood on the manna post. He said, and the death angel would what? Pass over. That's where we get the Passover from, all right? Because after that, Jesus, I mean, God always reminded them, remember this day. He said, because this day should be the beginning of years from, for you. That's why the Jewish calendar, they have two starts of the Jewish calendar. Uh, and so therefore, he said, this should be the beginning of months for you. This was a new time for them. All right? So it was the Passover. So when, when the children of Israel finally got over, uh, he said, listen, I need you. He, 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 told, he told Moses how to build the tabernacle uh, and the place where they came and they worshiped God. And what they had to do was a tabernacle was built built in three parts. You had the courtyard where everybody could come. You had the holy place where only the priests could come. Then you had the holies of holies where only the high priest could go into once a year. All right, this is where we left off last time. And so what has, so this, God had told him that this is what you needed to do because now we see Christ now in this whole, this whole journey because the, it dealt with the salvation or the covering of the sins of the children of Israel. And so therefore, what we see now is he said, once a year, you come and you do this. You shed the blood of an animal. Why? Because that's what God did to begin with. He said, you have to shed the blood of an animal. He said, and when you shed that blood, it had to be blood that was of a lamb, that was spotless, that was pure. There was different sacrifices. That's why we see a blood of bulls and, and bullocks and different things. There was different sacrifices. We're not going to go into all that. Lamentations tells us all about the different sacrifices that they had to make. But the one sacrifice for sin was the sacrifice of an unblemished lamb. All right, so what would take place was that they would come together for the Passover. Everybody would meet. They would take now the priests that were in the courtyard. I mean, the priests that were, the priests could only go into the, the holy place, but there was a veil, and beyond the veil was called the holies of holies. All right, now, there was only a high priest who could go in the holies of holies. Are y'all with me so far? All right, so therefore, at that particular time of the Passover, the high priest now had to take the blood of the lamb and he had to sprinkle it on the mercy seat. Now this is what is called the earthly tabernacle, all right, that we find in the book of Hebrews, all right? Now, there's so many other scriptures I'm going to give you, but we're going to shoot now to the book of Hebrews. So go to uh, the book of Hebrews, all right? Put your finger in chapter number eight because that's where we're going to start, all right? So we see the earthly tabernacle that was, that was made uh, under the old covenant. All right, the old covenant. Now, what was finished when Jesus said it is finished? He said the old covenant now is complete. All right, and we're going to deal with the old covenant in a minute. He said the old covenant is now complete. The old covenant was the way they used to do the Passover. All right, the way they used to come every year and sacrifice the lamb to cover the sins of the people. The Bible says that when they came once a year, that the, that the shedding of the blood and the sprinkling of the blood would only cover cover their sins for a year. All right. Now, God is still dealing with the disobedience of man, but he allowed this covenant. If man kept this covenant, he says, I will cover your sins for a year, but you have to come back and do this every year. All right. And so that's what they did as the children of Israel. Now, you had people who were still in the world 
that was not of the children of Israel that still lived in a, in a, a rebellious state. That's why God developed the children of Israel because he says, listen, I need you to be a people of God. All right? The same thing God calls the church to do today. But what happened? Even the children of Israel rebelled. There was much rebellion in the children of Israel, all right? There was, that's why they even was taken into captivity and things, because there was still much rebellion in the children of Israel. These were God-set, God-appointed, God-set-apart children, all right? That God says, listen, I'm choosing you because I want you to live right before me. But man still erred. Why? Because of sin, because of temptation. The same thing that we deal with as the church today. All right? Because whereas the children of Israel, the Bible says that, that were the apple of God's eye, were God's favorite, all right, God developed the church. God not only was, was making this offering to the, to the Jews, he was now making this offering to the Gentiles. Gentiles is anybody that's not a Jew. All right? It says to the Jews first, then to the Gentiles. The invitation now is given to the Gentiles. The invitation is given now not only to the Jews, but it's given to everybody and anybody who would accept what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. All right? So everybody has the opportunity. All right? Now, the Bible also declares that Jesus said that his return would be predicated on the word of God getting all across the world, all across the globe. Well, that has been completed. The Word of God has gotten everywhere. So everywhere the Word of God has spread across and spread abroad the world. All right. So, therefore, the Word of Christ, the Word of, 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 of God in Christ has traveled now all across the world. We see even the, the, uh, 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 what the Bible depicts as the end times, a time of sorrow that we are seeing even happening today. We're seeing so many different things, that, uh, uh, even, even what we saw yesterday yesterday with the rainfall. Uh, when, when have we got so much rain? Well, I won't say so much rain. When have we got a one day of rain, but now there's flooding everywhere? You know, I'm watching the news. I'm, I'm watching uh, municipality I'm, uh, out of municipality talking about roads that were shut down, uh, neighborhoods that were flooded that never flooded before. I saw a, a news thing the, uh, on yesterday uh, where where uh, one of the townships was saying, "When are they going to get a control on this?" It has never flooded before. Now it's flooding. When are you going to get control? We're seeing a changing times. We're seeing a rise of water that we never saw before in places that you would think would never flood before. You're seeing flood waters rise. We're seeing so much calamity and different things happening in our society. And again, as we stated back in Ephesians, but some of us as a church are still asleep, acting like there ain't nothing changed. All right. When you see what's happening in, 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 in our political arena, when you see what's happening uh, now in Russia, when you see what's happening in Ukraine, when you see what's happening in Haiti, all these things the Bible says was going to come to be. And we see it right before our very eyes. We see it right before our very eyes. Just the chaos that is being, that is being uh, done by, 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 by uh, demonic influence and demonic forces and, and, and anything against God or the organization of God. We see the enemy uh, at, at, at uh, beginning his, his, or not beginning, but we see the enemy, you know, doing what his assignment is to do. His assignment is to come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And that's what he's doing. Are you with me, somebody? Okay. So we see now, so we see the work, we, we can uh, follow the work of, of, of God throughout the whole Testament of the redemption of man, God trying to always save man. Uh, and he did it through the covenant work. And then we find in Hebrew, uh, go to Hebrew, you're already there, let me get there. What I tell you, chapter number eight? Okay, chapter number eight. Uh, all right, let's start at verse 1. It says, now of, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest. Now, 
and remember, I told you that once a year during the Passover, you can keep the scripture on there, that once a year during the Passover, only the high priest could go into the holies of holies. All right? Only the high priest. No one else could go in there but the high priest. And that was only once a year. Okay? Now, so let's, so let's see, read. Now, of these things, which spoken of, of this is to some, we have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Well, that can only be Jesus. All right? That can only be Jesus. Because Jesus, that the Bible always tells that he's on the right hand of God. All right? So, right here in this scripture, we could, it only could be Jesus. All right? Now, and it's declaring him as our high priest, all right? Um, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Now, it's shifting us from the earthly tabernacle now to the heavenly tabernacle, all right? A tabernacle not made by, not made by hand, all right? So, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serves under the example and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was a, uh, admonished of God, when he was about to make the tabernacle, uh, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. All right, now I'm going to explain that in a minute. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established, uh, upon, a be established upon better promises. Now, there was promises according to the old covenant covenant according to the earthly tabernacle, but God's saying there's a better covenant, there's a better mediator who is now going to be Jesus, who is going to come and who is going to now prepare a better way. Now we're going to see that in a minute. All right. It says, for this, verse number seven, for if that first covenant had been faultless, all right, then should no place have been sought for a second. All right, so if that had worked, there would have been no need for Jesus to come. All right, if it had worked, but it didn't work. God could have very simply has said after his first covenant, listen, I done already destroyed the world once by water. Remember the flood came? The Bible said only eight was saved alive. That was Noah in the flood. Y'all remember that, right? He develops, first, he develops a covenant. After the first covenant, it didn't work. He could have very well have said, I'm done. I'm done with man. I'm done with these people. But he couldn't. Why? Because he already made a promise against himself. And that promise was, I won't destroy the world again by water. But when it is destroyed again, it's going to be by fire. All right? Now, the fire, the, 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 the desolation of fire is going to be at the end time before the re new creation or the recreation of the new world. All right? So, so now we have the first covenant is, is, is uh, has, they have found fault. So now, you have to see, he has to develop the second covenant, I, which was already in, in transition because we see Christ again from the beginning uh, of uh, creation. All right, what verse was that? Okay, uh, for if the first covenant, verse 7, for if the first covenant had been faultless, there should be no place to have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day cometh, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with all the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, that in the day I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. We talked about that because they uh, continue not in my covenant. They continue not according to 
my word. All right? They continue not according to my word. That's why we ought to stay in the word of God. All right? As believers today, if they did not continue in his covenant, which means they did not continue in his word, then even as the church today, we are to continue in his word as children of God. All right? Um, they because they continue not, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will write them in, and I will uh, be with them a God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not uh, teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, know the, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. All right? Now, this is a, this is a, a prophetic saying that they all will know me. Everybody across this world will know me before the time comes to end. All right? So no one can say they did not have an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. All right? Everyone will give an opportunity. Everyone will hear a word. Why? Number one, because God had already put a mechanism in man. We talked about this in Bible study on Wednesday. God had already put a mechanism in man to respond to whenever they heard the word, heard the word of God. And what was that mechanism? I guess y'all didn't come to Bible study, huh? What was the mechanism? Come on, Bible study people. What was the mechanism that God put in man that when they heard the word in any way, any form, any fashion, could cause them to respond? No. Say it. Say it. The measure of faith. All right? The Bible said he has given to every man the measure of faith. All right? So that is the mechanism that he has put in every human being that when they hear, no matter what form, no matter what fashion, they hear the word of God, that is a mechanism in them to make them respond. Now, whether you choose to or not is your will, but you can't say that you, don't, you didn't know or you didn't hear because he has given every man the measure of faith because faith is the only thing that can respond to the word of God. Are you with me? The Bible says faith comes by what? And hearing by what? How can they hear if there's not a preacher? And how can he preach? unless he be sent. All right? For by grace are you what? Through what? Through faith. So you're saved because of God's love for you. You're saved by God's unmerited favor towards you. You are saved because God loves you so much, but, but you're saved through faith. How is that through faith? Because that mechanism that he put in you, that when you hear the word of God, or you heard the word of God, or somebody spoke to you about God, something inside you sparked. And that mechanism of faith responded, made you get up out of your seat, made you open up your heart to say, Lord, I accept you. Lord, I need you. Whether you're in church, whether you're home, no matter where it took place, that mechanism inside you, which is faith, responded. Are you with me? Now, I don't know how y'all got me there. So. I'm not going to hold you long. I don't want to hold you long. I don't want you because there's so much I can give you. But I need you to read chapter number, number eight. Chapter number nine talks about the old sanctuary, the old covenant sanctuary. All right? Beginning from verse number one of chapter number nine. Verse number six talks about the old covenant sacrifice. All right? Verse number 11 Thank you very much. He trying to get it all too. <laughs> you are, you are. Anyway, so verse number 11, we're in chapter number 9 now. All right, I'm giving you a fast, fast forward version. 
chapter number 9, all right, verse number 11 says, but Christ, all right, now remember, only the high priest could go under the old covenant, all right, it says, but Christ come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, right? Talking about the old tabernacle, the old covenant, all right? Going into the old, co- the old tabernacle once a year. It says, being Christ now becoming a high priest. Now, verse number 12, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but, but by his own blood. Listen to this now. By his own blood. Did not Jesus say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. All right. So, this, the Bible says now, neither by the blood of goats or gas, uh, of calves, but by his own blood. He entered once into the holy place. Enter once into the holy place. Are y'all with me? Once in the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. By his own blood, he came as the sacrificial lamb. He hung on the cross. He shed his blood. He was found faultless. On Friday, when they crucified him, prior to that, he went before the judges. He went before Herod. He went before Pilate. He was, he was, he went before, he, or had his court case. Are y'all with me? Just as the lamb had to be spotless and found faultless under the old covenant, under the old covenant, it had to be found faultless. He had to follow the old covenant principles. He went under trial and jury. And each pilot, Herod, they said, I find no fault in him. He was spotless. He was sinless. And even before his own counsel, they found no fault in him. All right? It was now he was given over to the Jews. They said, do with him what you want. And they said, what would you have him to do? They said, crucify him. Crucify him. Now, that was kind of a wicked thing to do to your own. And we would say, why did it make sense? It doesn't make sense. But in the process of what God was doing for our eternal redemption, it had to take someone who was sinless, who had no sin in him. How did he have no sin in him? Why? Because he didn't give in to any temptation of the devil. And we see that from the beginning of the time. He never gave in to temptation. He was faultless. All right? He didn't have sin in him even from the beginning of time. I tell you, I had to fast forward. But you got to remember that when the Bible says that when even he was in the womb of Mary, all right, the Bible says that when the angel of the Lord came to her, he spoke to her. He said, that which is in you is a holy thing. And so, he, she, so she was con- the Bible said she was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Why? That's what made him sinless. Why? Because the, the sin seed travels through the mail. So that's why he had to find a virgin woman and her conception came by the Holy Ghost and because she could not have been touched by a male because sin travels through the male seed. Are y'all with me? So therefore, he was raised by Joseph, but God was his father. 
And that's why he says, I come to do the will of my Father. And that's why even as we get to this Holy Week and we get to Good Friday, when we get to the time before the cross, as he went to Gethsemane, and the Bible says he took his disciples with him and he said, I got to go pray. The burden has become so heavy, all right? The, the, the warfare of demonic forces was all around him. He's being delivered, uh, about to be delivered to be crucified. He's about to be given up by his own people. He's about to carry the weight and the burden of the world on his shoulders. He goes to the guard and he falls down on his knees. Because the weight was so heavy that the Bible says that his sweat was like drops of blood. And he says, and he cries out, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Because now he had to carry the weight. He knew his, his assignment that he had, that he had to get to that cross. To the Bible even says that, that the prince of the power of the air, if he had known what he was doing, all he wanted to do, he wanted, he put it in the hearts of the people to crucify their own. He put it in the hearts of people to crucify Jesus, to, that he would die. And that's why they crucified him. But the Bible said, even if the prince of the power of this world had known what the final result was going to be, it said he wouldn't even have crucified. He wouldn't even have crucified the Lord. So it says the devil don't know everything. He might know a lot of things, but when there are some things that God is concerning you, he don't let the devil know. You got to realize how special and how unique you are. That is, regardless of how much the devil, because it didn't, it didn't stop the devil from messing with Jesus. All right? But he didn't realize, understand the total uniqueness of Jesus. And that same total uniqueness that God has in you, that sometimes the devil don't even know what God has prepared for you. For the Bible says, eyes have not seen. And ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for you and you and you. And so we find Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane crying out before God. And then if you turn to John chapter number uh, uh, 19, I do believe it is. We find that even in the garden, now we, we, we all know the Lord's Prayer as our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that as, a, as the Lord's Prayer, but the true Lord's Prayer is found in John chapter number 17. I told you 19, but it's 17. That even when he knew what he was about to go through and what he was about to deal with, he prays for you. He prays for each and every one of us. In the agony of his prayer, he prays for us. And it was at the conclusion of that prayer that he knew now his time was at hand. And they were waiting for him. Because in the very next verse, or the very next chapter, they were waiting to take him. And as they took him, he just finished praying for us, for each and every one of us. Jesus now being delivered to be crucified, to be hung, to hang on that cross, to now set a new covenant in place. The Bible says that the new covenant could not take place. That's why I need you to read he, he, uh, Hebrews chapter number 8, chapter number 9, chapter number 10, and chapter number 11. The new covenant could not take place until the old covenant was done. The Bible says that a new testament cannot be enforced until the death of a testator. 
He was coming now to establish the new covenant. The new covenant that now all those who would call upon his name could be saved. I don't want to go into Easter next week, so we'll deal with the rest of this part on next week when we deal with Easter because of what took place in those three days. What took place from his death on the cross to the time of resurrection morning. We'll find that out next week. We'll deal with that next week. But you got to understand that he had to follow the process of the old covenant in order that he might establish the new covenant. The old covenant was given to the children of Israel. The new covenant is now given to the church or the new covenant is given to the Gentiles. The new covenant is now given to anyone and everyone who would accept what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary. How he shed his blood. Blood had to be shed. Blood had to be shed. Blood had to be shed of a lamb, unblemished lamb. Well, Jesus did that. The lamb had to be given up. Jesus did that. The lamb had to die. Jesus did that. And so we see the process or the journey of the cross we see from the beginning of time when God first shed the blood of an animal to cover man and to be with man. And God has done it once again. But he says this time, when I do it, it is once and for all. And God now says, whosoever will, let them come. Whoever accepts what I've done now, let them come. Why? Because Jesus stands as the high priest, which we'll get into next week. But he said, whosoever will, let him come. And that is the call to you today. Because if you're here today and you're not saved, that mechanism inside of you just went off. That mechanism right now is going off. Now, whether you accept it or not, it's totally up to you. But because the word of God has gone forth in the call of what Jesus has done, that mechanism that God has already given you, that's already inside of you, is going off right now. It's beeping, it's buzzing, it's nudging you. It's going off right now. Amen. Whether you respond, it's totally up to you. But you don't know when it's going to be your last opportunity. You don't know when it's going to be your last chance. Because we all think we have tomorrow. But the word tells us tomorrow is not promised to us. But we know who holds tomorrow. But tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. And so will you have the opportunity again that if that mechanism inside of you is going off right now and you were to realize I may not have tomorrow, then you better make that decision today to come to Jesus and come to him now. He's calling you. Will you respond? He hung on the cross shed his blood, died for you. That's the most important thing. Now, there are so many benefits that come with knowing Christ. That's when we get into the promises. But just the fact that even if you were to accept Christ today and die tomorrow, the greatest is that you accepted Jesus Christ to give you the opportunity of eternal life. That's the greatest gift. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's the greatest. That's the blessing of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. That you will live eternally with Jesus 
How's that? Because now it's taking us back to God's original intent that he had when he made man. He restored you back to the place when he created Adam. He created you back to the place of eternal fellowship with him. That when you die, you shall be like him. Now, in between your salvation and in between the time that we give up physical death, that we die, is when we inherit and receive and walk in the promises of God. But if you're never given that opportunity, the greatest thing is that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. If you're here today, and that mechanism inside you is going off right now, saying, why is he talking right to me? And you're even thinking, I'm looking right at you. God is looking at you right now because he wants you to respond to his call. Every head bow and every eye closed. If you're here today, the people of God right now is praying for you. They're focusing right now on the one that is not saved. The one who needs Jesus Christ in their heart. That's what the saints of God are doing right now. That is their prayer. God, if there's anybody in here right now that that mechanism is going off, that they will respond. That is the prayer of the saints of God. That is the prayer of anybody else who's already saved, that they're praying for the one that is not saved. That's so important that we pray for them because the enemy's trying to keep them where they are. And we need praying saints, praying warriors to break through the barrier of the enemy's forces upon them. We're not just standing and looking around just seeing who will come and who won't come. No, we're praying. We're praying. We're warring against the influence of demonic forces that try to keep them where they are, thinking that they're all right, that they don't need Jesus. We're praying for you. And we're also praying for the one that is seeking a church home, the place that you know you can grow, a place that you know you can get sound words, sound doctrine. You feel the presence of God. You hear his voice speaking to you through the word of God, through the worship. And this is a place you feel comfortable, comfortable with the people of God, comfortable with the word of God. And you say, this is a place I would like to be. This is a place I believe God is placing me that I might grow. We're praying for you because we only believe that God sends here who he wants here. And thirdly, we're praying for the one who got disconnected from God, got away from God, started doing their own thing. And you've been having some trouble getting back. You want to come back. You want to get back in that place with God that you used to be. But something just keeps tugging you every time you get ready to make that decision that I want to get back in that right fellowship with God. Some influence just keeps you from making that step. Well, we're praying for you today that you can make that step, that you will make that step, to let the enemy know that in your private time, he will not hold you back. So I want to publicly right now say, devil, you're a liar. I'm going with God. I'm getting back to that place I used to be. So all three invitations stand open. The one, you need God right now. The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe that he was crucified, believe that he hung on the cross, believe that he shed his blood, believe that he died, believe that he was put in the grave, he was there for three days, believe that he rose early on that Sunday morning with all power in his hand, with life in him, eternal life that he now gives to each and every one of us. If you can believe that, that's all it takes for you to be saved today. 
And so we're praying for you. Secondly, for the one who's seeking a church home or family that is seeking a church home. Thirdly, for the one who's been disconnected and want to come back in that proper fellowship with God. And you just need prayer. You need help. If you're here, you may come. So as we all stand now, if one of those invitations fit you, we invite you to make your way to the front right now because somebody's praying for you right now. Will you come? Man, woman, boy or girl, will you come this day? Come. Come on. Come on. Mm-hmm. Come on. That mechanism is still going off. Will you respond to it? And somebody is still praying for you. Come on. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Is there one? Come on. God bless your heart. Yeah, yes. Yes. Is there one? Is there another? Is there another? Come on. Will you come today? Come on. You want to come. I know you want to come. I feel it in your spirit. Just come on. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. Come on. We're here for you. We're here to celebrate with you that you will make that decision. Come on. Come on. Come on. That mechanism of you getting a little stronger right now is telling you to come. It's telling you to respond. The faith that he has given you right now. Come on. If you're here, come on. Young woman, young man, come on. Older man, older woman, come on. Make that decision today. All three invitations stand open. Will you come? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. We don't want to rush this time. This is for you. This is your opportunity to come. This is for you. If you're here and you want to come, but you just feel a little afraid, then ask the person next to you, will you go with me? If you want to come, ask the person next to you, because perhaps you know them, because that's why you're sitting next to them. Say, will you go with me? I want to go, but will you go? I'm a little afraid to go, and that's okay. You might need that little that help, that little assistance. Come on. If you're one of the ones that want to come, say, will you go with me? All right. Then I want you to look at the person next to you. I want you to look at them and say, are you good? You good? If they say I'm good, then we're all good. Now, if they tell you I'm not good or I'm not sure, then let them know. Say, I'll go with you. Say, you sure? You sure? If you're not sure, I'll go with you. So we all good? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. 
You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Rewards are going to come. Amen, church. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. A great portion of my dissertation I had in mind in reference to Palm Sunday, Pastor already shared in this message, but I would like to once again just read John chapter 12, verse 12 says, On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. This day, this Sunday, as we acknowledge Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday commemorates Jesus' entrance to Jerusalem. It commemorates the Christian belief of the triumphal entry. Palm Sunday is a message of peace and love. The love of Christ be in you on this day and always. The Psalms, the palms, the palms are a symbol of victory, triumph, peace, and eternal life. Scripture said they laid palms across Jesus' path and were waving them, which symbolizes goodness and victory. Some of the lessons from the palm tree. Palm trees teach humility. They are not grand or impressive to look at talking about the palm tree. If you have spent time in, a, uh, in the Caribbean where you can find palm trees, or maybe you watched it on TV, and you see a palm tree in the midst of a storm, you've seen palm trees in some of the greatest strengths of storms. But what you find, what you find is the palm tree will bend all the way over. And once the storm passes, it'll stand back up. So as today, as today, on this day, on this Sunday, on this Palm Sunday, we want you all to receive a piece of palm. But as you receive this palm, we want you to recognize and identify what this palm represents. This palm represents strength. It represents the love of God. What I want you to see is that in the storm it bent. As we go through the storms of life, as you receive this palm in representation of what Christ did, you need to know that you have that same strength. You need to know when the storms come, they may make you bend, but then when it passes, you'll stand back up. Palm Sunday, the palm tree, they teach genuineness and sincerity. It reminds us of the rest in God's kingdom. So on this day, on this Palm Sunday, I want you to receive a piece of palm, understanding what it means, understanding that in it, it denotes, it's a symbol of the strength that we have in Christ Jesus based on the sacrifice that he made on the cross. So therefore, we want to give all a piece of palm. Amen?
ministers and deacons come. Pray with me, if you will. Most heavenly, most gracious Father, on this day we come, O oh God. Lord, we come, O oh God, remembering, O oh God, what you've done for us, O oh God. Lord, we remember, O oh God, the sacrifice that you made. Lord, we remember, oh God, that you had us in mind on that, on that day of entry into Jerusalem, oh God. But Lord, we just pray right now that you touch the hearts and minds of everyone, oh God, that will receive a piece of palm on this day, oh God. Let them know what it represents. Remind them of what it stands for, Lord. And let them know, oh God, that it's through you, oh God, that they have the strength, oh God, that they saw, that they see, that they come to know and be palm. Let them know, God, let them be reminded as the storms come, they may bend. But if they hold on to you, oh God, when the storm passes, they'll stand back up. So, Lord, we give you glory, give you praise, Lord, and we ask you these things in your son Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Deacon this reigns, will you come also? Deacon Scania's, will you come? Pass out. Jehovah worship.
just as we leave this place until we meet again. God, we love you. We glorify you. We adore you. We're in all of you. You're an awesome God. Bless us and keep us now. In Jesus' name.